an AI icon wins a Nobel Prize and uses it to stir up some more controversy. Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief. Today we are talking about something that took the AI world by kind of a surprise this week, which was not one but two Nobel Prizes to AI industry leaders who don't exactly have a direct relationship with the category that they won their prize in. The first of these announcements came out on Tuesday, where Jeffrey Hinton, frequently called a godfather of AI, and at this point best known for his advocacy around AI safety, was awarded the Nobel Prize for Physics along with John Hopfield. The Nobel Committee said, Although computers cannot think, machines can now mimic functions such as memory and learning. This year's laureates in physics have helped make this possible. Using fundamental concepts and methods from physics, they have developed technology that use structures and networks to process information. Hinton was the co-author of a paper published back in 1986 that popularized the backpropagation algorithm for training multilayer neural networks. He went on to design the foundational image recognition model AlexNet in 2012 with assistance from his then-students Alex Krzyzewski and Ilya Sutskiver. Ilya, of course, would go on to co-found OpenAI and more recently Safe Superintelligence. Hinton worked on AI at Google from 2013 until last year, when he left in order to be able to, as he put it, freely speak about the risks of AI. Hopfield, meanwhile, wrote one of the seminal papers on neural networks in 1982, and was so foundational to the field that a simple example of a neural network is named after him. The Hopfield network was the first to be able to store and recall memories using its neural structure. A published scientist since the late 1950s, Hopfield applied his knowledge in biophysics to transfer fundamental principles that could be used to create neural networks. Hinton characterized himself as flabbergasted to receive the prize. In a telephone interview, he said that AI will have a huge influence on our society, adding, it will be comparable with the Industrial Revolution, but instead of exceeding people in physical strength, it's going to exceed people in intellectual ability. We have no experience of what it's like to have things smarter than us. Hinton said the technology could revolutionize healthcare or dramatically improve productivity, but warned, we also have to worry about a number of possible bad consequences, particularly the threat of these things getting out of control. And you can definitely feel Hinton in these interviews, seeming fairly frustrated at how little people are heeding his warnings. He said in one, my guess is in between 5 and 20 years, there's a probability of half that we'll have to confront the problem of AI trying to take over. He also said in a conversation with the BBC that developments over the last year showed governments were unwilling to rein in military use of AI, while the competition to develop products rapidly meant there was a risk tech companies wouldn't put enough effort into safety. He came off particularly prickly, let's say, in an interview with the New York Times. Now, part of it may be that he just kept hanging up on them to talk to the BBC, but he also was fundamentally unwilling to even talk or really try to explain what the contributions that he was being recognized for actually meant. Indeed, when Times journalist Cade Metz asked, can you explain in language that the readers of the Times would understand, he referenced the legendary Richard Feynman to basically blow the guy off. Pricklier still was a press conference at the University of Toronto, where he said, I was particularly fortunate to have very many clever students, much cleverer than me, who actually made things work. They've gone on to do great things. I'm particularly proud of the fact that one of my students fired Sam Altman. Presumably Hinton was talking about Ilya Sutskever. Twitter user Marcus Van de Every had this assessment about Hinton. Hinton, without a grain of doubt, is an idea leader who launches an idea that changes the world. But that's where his strength and weakness lies. He is not the leader who turns that idea into a thriving product offering. For that, another type of leader is required. Someone that he doesn't resonate with at all. In his eyes, an opportunistic visionary profit-seeking SOB who doesn't give up. People like Jobs, Musk, and Altman. Hinton's hunch about leadership types is as bad as his hunch about neural networks was good. So basically, Marcus is arguing here that Hinton is a priori skeptical of anyone like a Sam Altman. That certainly could be, but it seems to me that the bigger issue might be that in his mind, his argument isn't winning. A recent example of this is, of course, California AI legislation SB 1047, which he came out strongly in favor of, but which was ultimately vetoed by Governor Gavin Newsom. As I said at the beginning, though, Hinton wasn't the only AI leader who won a Nobel this week. Google DeepMind CEO Demis Hassabis tweeted, Massive congratulations to my good friend and former Google colleague Jeffrey Hinton on winning the Nobel Prize in Physics. Incredibly well-deserved. Jeff laid the foundations for the deep learning revolution that underpins the modern AI field. Ex-user BoneGBT responded, In a few decades, you'll get yours for AlphaFold. And yet it turns out it wasn't a few decades, but 24 hours. On Wednesday, the Nobel Prize for Chemistry was awarded to a trio of scientists, all of whom advanced the study of protein structure. David Baker of the University of Washington was honored for creating computational tools to design novel proteins for use in medicine and sensors. And Demis Hassabis and John Jumper from Google DeepMind were awarded the prize for their use of AI to predict the structure of proteins. 
Heider Linke, chair of the Nobel Committee for Chemistry, said, One of the discoveries being recognized this year concerns the construction of spectacular proteins. The other is about fulfilling a 50-year-old dream, predicting protein structures from their amino acid sequences. Both of these discoveries open up vast possibilities. Hassabis and Jumper were the developers of AlphaFold, who solved one of the most difficult problems in biochemistry. As the Washington Post put it, unraveling the nuances of how the sequence folded up into lumpy balls or intricate loops was a tough problem. In 1994, scientists began organizing a competition called the Critical Assessment of Protein Structure Prediction, a kind of Olympics for protein folding, in which scientists would try to predict the structure of proteins whose forms had recently been decoded but not yet publicly released. Progress was slow until 2018 when Hassabis and Jumper began to deploy tools grounded in artificial intelligence to crack the problem. The second version of their AI tool called AlphaFold2 could predict protein structure and it turned out just as well as laborious conventional techniques. In a blog post celebrating the prize, Google DeepMind wrote, Before AlphaFold, predicting the structure of a protein was a complex and time-consuming process. AlphaFold's predictions have given more than 2 million scientists and researchers from 190 countries a powerful tool for making new discoveries. The AlphaFold2 paper, published in 2021, remains one of the most cited publications of all time. Discussing the award, Hassabis said, Receiving the Nobel Prize is the honor of a lifetime. I've dedicated my career to advancing AI because of its unparalleled potential to improve the lives of billions of people. I hope we'll look back on AlphaFold as the first proof point of AI's incredible potential to accelerate scientific discovery. Jumper added, Computational biology has long held tremendous promise for creating practical insights that could be put to use in real-world experiments. AlphaFold delivered on this promise. Ahead of us are a universe of new insights and scientific discoveries made possible by the use of AI as a scientific tool. In later comments, Hassabis reflected on how much AI has changed the shape of the scientific world, saying, Nobel originally set the prizes back 100 plus years ago, so obviously there was no computer science. But I think it's pretty amazing to see the effect of AI on the other sciences and as a tool. I think we'll probably start seeing more of that. Hinton made this point as well. When the New York Times said, is it odd that you've received this award for physics? Hinton said, if there was a Nobel Prize for computer science, our work would clearly be more appropriate for that. But there isn't one. The Times responds, that's a great way of putting it, to which Hinton said, it's also a hint. Daniel Lemaire really summed it up when he tweeted, After learning that the 2024 Physics Nobel Prize was given for AI research, we learned that the 2024 Chemistry Nobel Prize was also given for AI research. Computer science is the new master science. So very interesting stuff. Congrats and thanks for your contributions, of course, to all the winners. That's going to do it for today's AI Daily Brief. Appreciate you listening as always. And until next time, peace.